Hello again, this is Fiendish with ImagingTouring.com and for this episode of the Tinker Tools video guides we will be talking about the offset calculator and the axes and why offsets are important and as well as directions of movement. Now rift dimensions work off of a three axis system. You've got X, Y, and Z. Now X and Z will rotate, you know, either front to back or side to side, depending on your perspective of view. But the Y, the up and down, will never change. Now when I go to rotate, they switch uh, pitch, yaw, and roll. We'll cover more about the rotational uh, axes once we get to rotating, but for now we're just going to deal with this here. So you'll hear me talk when we do these videos about a positive or negative movement. Positive movement means I'm going in the direction of the arrow. Negative movement means I'm going away from it. Not to the side, but behind it. And why are offsets important? Well, offsets are important because say I have this block here, we'll use this one. I'm going to click use new items. I have this this brick facade here and I'm going to lay another one on it with no offset. So now it's flickering really badly because my my video card cannot tell the difference between the two pieces and once I move it I don't even have to try to and I break that that pattern. I don't even have to try to to not see that anymore. Uh, now sometimes you can intentionally put the flicker in place, like say you want to, to build a, a broken TV set or something, but usually for a structure you don't want this. Um, there's been a lot of times I've gone looking at dimensions and they'll have used some add-on with math inputs to make something perfectly gorgeous, but they won't offset any of their blocks, so the seams all flickered really a lot. So, but those will be offsets that we'll really talk about during copy and paste portion because those are going to be just minor, minor um, offsets to reduce that flicker. For other offsets, you're going to want the offset calculator. Now, for this, the offset calculator is good for things like setting up floors, setting up walls, um, you know, and getting a precise measurement so that you actually use fewer pieces than if you were doing it by hand and precisely aligned. Especially when it comes to structures, you're going to want your pieces lined up or flat because, I mean, well, sometimes you want them crooked, but most of the time you want it flat. So there's always more than one way to do everything. The easiest way is I select the piece I want to copy and I hit detect and then I hit calculate. And so on a positive axis this is telling me how far it has to go in any direction to butt so that the second piece would butt up entirely to this one. Now you're not very rarely are you going to move something in all three axes at once. So once you have your calculate done, then you pre then you press this little arrow right here and this pops open. And again, you've got more than one way to do this. Now I just want to move it in the X. So I'm going to uncheck Y and Z and then I'm going to hit copy and paste and I'm going to hit transfer. So it's going to open it up, open up the copy and paste window for me with the offset already in place. Now I want, I'm going to, again, I'm going to check use new items and just have it come in from my bags. If you want it coming from your bank, you can do that too. I want them just coming out of my bags. So I'm going to hit copy and paste. And so now 
I've got a second rectangle perfectly lined up with the first one. And it was that easy. And it, if I can do the move, but all I'm doing then is adding another step. So I uncheck copy and paste and then check the move box, hit transfer. So it's going to put 13.5 because I only want to move it that amount. And then I'm going to hit relative. So I can either move this piece or I can copy another one and then move that one. But that just added another step and normally I would not do that. I would just use copy and paste. And of course if I want to say say I want to go back the other way now I'm going to inverse direction which means I'm going to go the opposite way. Hit transfer back in copy and paste and so minus 13.5 is showing up in the X copy and paste and that was it. So the other way I can do it <coughs> Let me clear all this out. To close this little window here, all I gotta do is hit the arrow again. So if I wanna do it manually, I've got this piece here selected and it's still a rectangle, but my orientation is no longer the default. So I'm gonna line it up, pitch and roll 90, and I know it's pitch and roll 90 because this is telling me that it's a pitch and roll 90. And now my scale is not exactly the same. My scale is an 8. 8. Now I'm not going to hit detect. I'm just going to hit calculate. And then it's the same process. Um, this time I want to move it in the Y. Transfer. Copy paste. So now if I want to build this wall. I've got it all the way set up. And then we'll get more complex with it later on. This is teaching basic functions right now. Um, it's almost impossible to teach just one access, one, one aspect because they all work together. Okay, so you see I've got these poles here. Now I need to figure out a distance between them. So this is what's called a selection delta. And I can use that basically to uh, get my center point. So transfer. Yep, I want to clear that out. So now and clear that out. So that just moved it right on top of each other, but you get the idea. If I wanted to do the math, then I could set up um, a center point, but generally if you're going to do something like this, then you would just use the basic move function and we'll cover that in the next video. I'm always trying to get ahead of myself. So Tinker Tools will offset for things that are on an angle. Now this one, it won't detect, it might not detect accurately because as you can see now, it only wants to move it in the X axis when maybe I want to move to butt another piece here because I'm making a roof. So I already know based off the size of the block, that's not going to be right, but I bet that is. Okay. So we're, this time we're going to move it in the Y and the Z and we're going to need to invert the direction because we're going up and back away from the arrow. So transfer oh, not to move to copy and paste. 
And there we go. And if I want to offset multiple items, I can do that, but we haven't even touched on that part of copy and paste yet. And that is how you can perfectly line up angled pieces. And it's not, it won't just, now these are at a 45 because that's the most common angle outside of 90. You can, it'll work on 35, it'll work on 15, it'll work on 60, whatever angle you choose to use. Um, it may take some trial and error to figure out like which direction. Uh, basically when it comes to something like that, just look at the size of the block that it's telling you because you know that you don't want to go just straight that way. And that is not nearly far enough for a block this size. So I hope that this video explained the basic functions of the offset calculator. Um, as always, if you if you need to, you can find me in game, uh, Bear Dare at Greybriar or what you call it at Greybriar. And also, there's this handy thing right here. This is the built-in help menu, as well as written guides are. Um, posted up on DTC. So until next time when we're talking about move, the move function, uh, happy building.